Welcome back, everybody. Moving on to the last question on the test. We finally reached the end. So we have a diver. He's on a 10 meter platform preparing to perform a dive. The diver's height above the water, HT in meters, at time t seconds can be modeled using the equation h of t equals 10 plus 3t minus 4.9t squared. Two parts to this question. So part A, determine when the diver will enter the water. And then part B, estimate the rate at which the diver's height above the water is changing as he enters the water. Now, one thing I want to mention about this part B, the wording of it, estimate the rate, the rate at which the diver's height above the water is changing. Basically, they're just asking for the rate of change or the speed of the diver as he enters the water. So there's different ways to form this part B question. Usually they'll just say, what is the speed of the diver as he enters the water? So we'll be finding the instantaneous rate of change as he uh, enters the water. But they can also word it in this confusing way here. Estimate the rate at which the diver's height above the water is changing. Basically his instantaneous rate of change as he enters the water, which is the same as the speed. So just take note of that. It could be worded in multiple different ways, but they all mean the same thing. So before we do part A, before we determine when the diver will enter the water, let's draw a mini graph of this situation, of this equation. Let's see what's going on. So basically, this equation is the height of the diver above the water versus the time from when he jumps. So notice that when time is zero, if we plug in zero for t, we would have a height of 10 meters. And that makes sense because notice in the question, it says he's on a 10 meter platform. So if you were to graph this out, approximately the way the graph would look, would the diver would jump up a bit and then he would come back down like that. That is the height of the diver above the water after he jumps off the diving board. And it makes sense because if you notice, this is a quadratic. This is a parabola that is opening down because this a value, negative 4.9, is negative. Usually the a value is at the beginning of a quadratic um, equation, but uh, here it's at the end, but it's still negative. It's still opening down. So this is 10 meters here. And part A, determine when the diver will enter the water. Well, when does he enter the water? Well, the water is basically the x-axis, right? When the height is zero. So we gotta solve for when he hits the water here, at what time t. So basically, when he hits the water, the height above the water is going to be zero, right? Because he's hitting the water, so he's not in the air anymore. So basically, to solve for when he will enter the water, we plug in zero for h. and we have to solve for this t value. Now usually you can do factoring, um, but notice in this case, factoring would not be possible. So we're gonna have to use the quadratic formula. So notice how our a value is negative 4.9, our b value is positive three, and then our c value is 10. And we know that our um, quadratic formula is what? Negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So if we plug everything in, negative b, negative 3 plus or minus 3 squared minus 4 times a, which is negative 4.9, times c, which is 10, and this is gonna be all over two times negative 4.9. Okay, so notice how in the square root, this negative, this negative is gonna turn into a positive. So we'd have three squared plus four times 4.9 times 10. Um, and you're basically gonna to have to input this in your calculator and then simplify it. So when you do this in your calculator, you get two answers. You get negative 1.15 and 1.77. Notice how time can't be negative, so we would uh, ignore that answer there. So 1.77 seconds, that's the time 
at which this diver is going to hit the water. So that is our answer there. So the answer to this question is 1.77 seconds. And then finally, part B, they're asking for the speed at which the diver hits the water or the rate at which the height of the diver is changing above the water when he hits the water, how the question was worded before. In a more confusing way, basically they're just asking for the speed at which the diver hits the water or the instantaneous rate of change when he hits the water or the slope of the tangent when he hits the water. So basically they're asking for the slope of the tangent at that point on the function. Okay, so basically we have to find the instantaneous rate of change when t is what? 1.77 seconds because that's the time at which he hits the water. We found that out in part A. So a couple of different ways to do this. Um, because we're dealing with a quadratic, you can actually use the difference quotient. It'll take you fairly long, but you can get a pretty good approximation with the centered interval as well. So let's do the centered interval. So let's pick a time that's very close to the left of 1.77 seconds. So let's say 1.76 seconds. And then a time that's greater than 1.77, that's close to it, so like 1.78. And now what we can do, these are t values by the way, is we can find the average rate of change between these two t values that are very close to 1.77 and that slope of the secant line would be a very good approximation for the slope of the tangent line as well. So basically, uh, continuing this over here, what we're going to do is we're going to find the, um, or actually, sorry, this is in terms of height. So we'll have, what's the height of the diver at 1.78 seconds minus the height of the diver at 1.76 seconds all over 1.78 minus 1.76. Now, looking at this, you may think it's a little weird because at 1.78 seconds, he's gonna be under the water so the height is going to be negative but still you can still use that 1.78 seconds we're just using it to find an approximation for that slope of the tangent and when you end up doing all that in your calculator so if you plug in 1.78 for t here and then 1.76 for t subtract both of those values and then uh, simplify the denominator then divide all that out you would end up getting negative approximately negative 14.35 and the height is in meters and the time is in seconds so this is going to be negative 14.35 meters per second so that there is the answer the reason why it's negative is because it's going in a negative direction the height is getting smaller and smaller notice how the slope of this tangent is negative so you can also say the diver hits the water at 14.35 meters per second when you make your concluding statement, because if you remember, speed is a magnitude. So it doesn't really take into account the direction, that's velocity, but they're asking for the speed. But uh, either way, I think even if you leave the negative, I think your teacher would be okay with that, but just be aware of that. Perhaps maybe when you're making your concluding statement, the speed at which the diver hits the water is 14.35 meters per second. However, the way the question was worded initially actually was the rate at which the height of the diver is changing above the water when he hits the water. So if you want to word your concluding statement in that way, in the way it was asked, which is probably the proper way actually, now that I think about it, you can say that the height is decreasing uh, by 14.35 meters per second when he enters the water. So that's another way to word it. Because it's negative, the height is decreasing at that rate per second. Uh, that's the instantaneous rate of change when he enters the water. But either way, this negative uh, 14.35, that is your answer for part 